Hello, welcome back to Sigma TV. With me today we have Alan Platt, COO and co-founder of cybersecurity company Cyberhive. Hi Alan, well, thank you for coming on the show. Hi there, good morning, thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you Alan. And uh, as I mentioned there in the intro, um, just to give a little summary of what Cyberhive does, uh, Cyberhive focuses heavily on cybersecurity and uh, you've had the Gatekeeper project which you did in tandem with the UK, the British government. Uh, tell us a bit about CyberHive and the kind of work that uh, you guys do. Yeah, sure. So obviously we all know that cybersecurity is a very big issue. Um, virtually every time I talk on an interview, there's more examples of hacks and things have come through. So, you know, just the recent examples, the British Airways hack last year, the Marriott Group, um, which had not one but two big data breaches, one of which they didn't even notice for four years. Uh, but this year as well, at the beginning of the year, TravelX were taken offline for weeks. And for them, it's had sufficiently severe business impacts that they're now actually in uh, potentially looking into administration. And really what we focus on is obviously all of these companies have defenses in, in place. Everybody has antivirus, firewalls, two-factor authentication, but it just it's proving to be not enough. So CyberHive has built a patented cybersecurity technology that addresses the root cause of a large number of these breaches. The problem is that there's an elephant in the room. Many CIOs are reluctant to acknowledge that actually 90% of the data breaches and attacks actually start with human error. And that error is often made by competent people, system administrators with high levels of access or even CEOs. And it can make it very hard to spot the data breaches. And a terrifying statistic is that on average at the moment, it's taking companies more than 200 days for their company to notice that they've had a data breach. So the government contract that we secured, which you mentioned earlier, um, is a good example of that. So in the background, they wanted to use Microsoft Office 365 for email. It's great. It gives them access from anywhere. It's really easy to use. It's very simple to administer. And ironically, those are exactly the problems with the security. So they approached us and asked us if we could use our technology, our patented cybersecurity solution, to build them something that gave them all of the benefits of using Office 365 with none of the downsides. So that's exactly what we did. And we particularly focused on reducing susceptibility to human error. And now it's in use across several of the most sensitive security conscious departments in the UK government and it's growing day by day. They love it because particularly with the rise in home working, um, we're starting to, to see a, a rise in cyber security breaches. So we're now starting to take this out so that commercial audiences can also benefit from exactly the same technology that the government is so benefiting from. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's a really good segue for what I wanted to ask about uh, next, because obviously with uh, COVID-19 and this whole lockdown uh, issue that been, that's been going on, we've seen a lot of offices move to a more remote working model. Uh, and uh, tell us a bit more how CyberHive has been active in this area. Sure. I mean, we have seen lots of cyber attacks as a result of, or at least made worse by the, the recent move to home working. And there are lots of reasons behind this. I mean, probably one of the largest reasons is that there's so many people now needing to work from home and IT teams have had to move to that new world really quickly. So lots of the work has to allow people to work from home has been done at speed and that brings in the potential for mistakes. Security setups that most organizations have are really designed to secure access to systems when people are in the office. So to allow people to access the data remotely, IT teams have effectively tunneled underneath their carefully fortified castle walls and they've opened up huge security bre breaches and weaknesses in their own infrastructure. And again, it's been done fast. There have been lots of changes in working practices as well, which haven't helped. So fraud is on the up as normal, stable business processes are being bypassed or reworked for the new normal. Lots of phishing attacks as well have started as COVID-19 related emails, and some of them are very convincing. And things you would expect to get from your office are changing. So things that you would imagine, you would never receive emails from your office on certain subjects, they're almost becoming the normal now. And it's very hard to work out what's real and what's a scam. So these are exactly the problems that we built Gatekeeper, our product that was first built for the UK government. We designed to, it to help fix a lot of these problems and we can provide highly secure methods to access your critical data. 
they're not susceptible to administrator error or human error, um, but they still have to be very, very easy to use. If systems are not easy to use, it gives the employees an incentive to find ways around them, and that in turn opens up bigger security breaches. So our systems have to be ultra secure and also very simple to use. So even if a user or a system administrator does fall foul of a clever or advanced phishing scam and even gives away their password or worse, we need to know that their data is still going to remain secure. Mm -hmm. And now, obviously, with uh, speaking on COVID-19, one of the biggest uh, inventions really that people are waiting for is the vaccine. So maybe we can go back to a semblance of normality. Um, I would imagine that there are a number of hacks going on between governments right now. I mean, God only knows what's happening at those high levels. Um, is this something that you have thought of at CyberHive? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a UK official was quoted um, in the news a few weeks ago that they are 95% sure that Russian hackers have tried to steal the coronavirus vaccine research from Oxford University. Uh, we've seen um, Oxford have reported a huge rise in cyber attacks and hacking attempts on their infrastructure. And given that it is so difficult to detect a data breach, we simply can't be sure that that research hasn't been stolen. And of course, that's a huge deal, not just for the coronavirus vaccine, which is fundamentally something that many organisations are trying to do for, for the benefit of the world. But also, you have to remember that for pharmaceutical companies, research costs a very large amount of money, and it can take years to bring drugs to the market under normal circumstances. Uh, some research I saw from John Hopkins University estimated the cost of bringing a drug to market to be between two and three billion dollars makes the value of that data immense. So if a company can shortcut all of that work and can take some of that research from people who've spent all of that money on it, it basically means that that data is a hugely valuable target. And if you think about things like um, email and internal communications using services like Slack or other chat applications, even the data that's on there can be really highly valuable. And of course, drugs are often patented, um, but that's a really difficult subject. Um, and if somebody takes all of your research, they may be able to find ways of working around the patents or at least shortcutting the process for developing a new but similar drug by many years. The value of this stolen research is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, pivoting slightly away from COVID, but still focusing on this uh, area of the medical sector. Uh, obviously, this is a pre-interview to uh, our MedTech event in October. Uh, Tell us a bit how cybersecurity issues may be impacting smaller businesses in the medtech sector. So you're absolutely right. It's not just pharmaceuticals. Um, and in fact, IP theft is even more serious for smaller businesses. So I've personally seen many companies in the medical devices and diagnostic equipment markets um, developing new and very innovative products. Some are patented, but some are not. And particularly in the early stages of research, they rely on keeping IP secret to avoid copy makers. You know, the cost can, again, be very high, perhaps not the two or three billion dollars we've talked about for pharmaceuticals, but there can be many millions. And even the cost of, for example, CE marking a product can be huge. And it's very hard to protect that IP and also very easy to steal it. So for smaller companies, IP theft is more serious. AstraZeneca can afford to breach um, that they can afford to prosecute for breaches of patent. An SME, probably hoping to hit it big, doesn't really stand much chance of being able to afford to prosecute those kind of cases. Also, increasingly, the medtech sector, they're using a lot of um, Internet of Things and cloud-based platforms as part of their products and part of their solutions. And securing those is, of course, critical because they're handling huge amounts of very sensitive patient data. And cyber attacks can actually come from the most unexpected places, slightly outside of the medtech sector. But um, I came across an example a while ago of a casino in the US which suffered from a large data breach. And actually, after tracing the information through, they found that they didn't hack the casino servers initially. They actually breached a fish tank controller that's used in the casino and used that attack on the fish tank controller as a way of then stepping off into the rest of the infrastructure and breaching that. So IoT can be of huge benefit, but also a huge risk. And again, 100% I 
rewind. Uh, again, CyberHive has designed solutions that are very specifically designed to try to combat those exact kind of attacks of breaching critical central infrastructure and making sure that access to your secure data is as secure as it can be. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much, Alan, for your time and your insight. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot more from you at the uh, MedTech MedCan Digital Summit. Um, thank you for the viewers for tuning in. And obviously, don't forget to register for the uh, MedTech MedCan Digital Summit, which is going to be broadcasting in October. And uh, we hope to see you all there. Thank you.